Hello and welcome back to this online uh, quiet day. Today, Christ is born, praying with the icon of the Holy Nativity. I'm Brother James and we're here at the Monastery Chapel in Cambridge. I wanna spend a few minutes now talking about how to pray with an icon. Icons tell a story. They tell a story about a person, about an occasion, about a particular legend, and it helps to know something about the story or legend that it tells. Icons are also curious in that sometimes they choose us rather than we choose them. I remember on one occasion looking at an icon and thinking that I couldn't make any sense of it, that I didn't like it, it was dark and strange, and then I saw the original icon, and I fell in love with it. It almost leapt off the wall and embraced me. So sometimes icons choose us. We don't very often choose an icon. But what exactly is an icon? The word icon comes to us from the Greek meaning image. And you may remember that in Paul's letter to the Colossians in the first chapter, Paul says that Jesus is the icon of the invisible God. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So an icon, an image, makes a visible that which is invisible. Jesus makes visible for us the invisible God. Jesus is the icon, the image of the invisible God. So icons are images which make something visible for us. One question that people often ask me is, is an icon written or is an icon painted? The two words seem to be used interchangeably. But an icon is not a picture or a painting so much as it is a theological statement. An icon is theology in color. And the colors of an icon are carefully chosen. Just as the writers of the Gospels carefully chose their words, so an iconographer carefully chooses their colors because the colors are symbolic. They mean something. Just as words mean something, so too, in an icon, the colors mean something. Icons are also referred to in some places as windows into heaven. We don't so much as look at an icon as we look through an icon. We look through an icon into a different world, into a different reality. An important thing to remember about icons is also that icons make present that which they represent. As I said a few moments ago, icons aren't simply pictures. Rather, they make present that which they represent. In that way, I like to com compare an icon to a flag, a national flag, like the Stars and Stripes or the Union Jack or the Maple Leaf. In those flags, the nation is made present in some strange way. A flag isn't simply colored fabric. It somehow manifests what it represents. The same is true for an icon. An icon makes present that which it represents. So an icon of Jesus isn't simply a picture of Jesus. Jesus is somehow mysteriously present to us through the icon. And just as with this icon, this isn't simply an, a picture of the nativity. The experience of the incarnation of God is somehow made real for us in this icon. One of the words which we use when we pray with an icon is we speak of gazing. 
we gaze at an icon. You might want to spend a few minutes looking at yourself in a mirror and just gaze at yourself and see what that feels like. But then you might want to glare at yourself and see what that feels like. When we glare at something, we do so in a sense of hostility, of anger. We are shut down. We're not prepared to change. We're not prepared to see the other point. We simply glare at people. But when we gaze at someone or something, we do so with eyes of love, with a heart open, willing to be changed. So, as you gaze at this icon, allow the icon to gaze back at you. Gaze at it with eyes of love and allow it to gaze back at you with love. And when that happens, God will give you the gift of prayer. One of my favorite images from Father Benson, our founder, Father Benson says that many people, that God speaks to many people who do not choose to listen. God speaks to many people who do not choose to listen. And then Father Benson goes on to say, and do you not think that God will speak to those who are listening? My hope for you is that this will be an experience, a gift of prayer. And that as you gaze at this icon, as you open your heart and your eyes and your mind, you will hear God speaking to you. When I was a child, I grew up in a small city, and every summer, one of the local Pentecostal churches put on a camp meeting, and there was always a big billboard across one of the main streets of the city that said, Come Expecting Miracles. And as you gaze at this icon, I invite you to do that. Expect a miracle. Expect that God will say something to you. It may be a word of love, a word of hope, a word of encouragement, a word of rest, a word of challenge. God will speak to you. God speaks to many people who do not listen. And do you not think that God will speak to those who are listening? The problem, as we all know, is that God usually speaks in silence. And so we need to listen carefully. We need to listen attentively. We need to listen quietly. So an icon is not a picture. It represents that. It presents that which it represents. It makes real the image. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. An icon makes real that which is invisible. And as we gaze in it, we're given the gift of prayer. I want to close by reading another poem. This one is called Praying by Mary Oliver. It doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention. Then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but a doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. Just Pay attention and then patch a few words together.